Well, I'm Artifacts of Mars. I'm not going to use playlists with this one. Here we have another idiot astronomer saying, oh, we're going to find microbes soon. They keep stringing us along, stringing us along, when some of us have seen plant life and possibly even animal life and Mars photos for the longest time and relics and everything else. But they're stringing us along, and this one finally tripped my trigger. I want to point out something. The scientists are always talking to us about finding habitable planets. Well, it turns out that's going to be much harder than what you're being told. And there's a simple reason for this. Uh, let's try a minute. This guy is Chris Impey. Grand astronomer Chris Impey, scientists more are likely on the verge of detecting microbes on a planet out beyond our own. Nearby candidates such as Jupiter's moon, Europa, who thought to contain some of the conditions for life. Same old game, they gotta keep you uh, strung along. So I'm not gonna bother that idiot. There's so much in Mars Falls that's overwhelming. How, how, uh, likely is it, do you think, that we'll find a planet like the Earth where you have the right combination of oxygen and inert gases in order to support our uh, life forms? The, total, the class M planet you always hear on Star Trek. Well, what I'm about to show you is going to shock you because... The odds are almost zero. What? What's artifacts talking about? All these scientists are saying there's all these places where we can go. Well, not quite. And I'm going to show you why. I'll bring up periodic table of the elements. Okay. Now, remember the higher the atomic number, the less available it is in general. Remember, we're uh, able to tolerate about 20% oxygen in the air. If it gets substantially higher than that and stays higher, it can cause problems. I'm not a doctor, but right around 20% is what we need. It has to be mixed with some kind of inert gas. So let's go down the list. Hydrogen, that's not inert. It's flammable, so if you had 80% hydrogen, 20% oxygen, don't strike a match. Hydrogen is not poisonous, but uh, don't strike a match, like I said. Number two is helium. Well, you couldn't use helium because it's lighter than oxygen, so two wouldn't mix. Lithium is a light metal, beryllium, boron, carbon. They're all solids. You do have carbon dioxide, but a very high percentage of carbon dioxide is toxic. So, we couldn't have carbon dioxide for the inert gas. And I'm talking about monoatomic gases that are mixed with oxygen. Number seven is nitrogen. These are the atomic numbers, by the way. We have 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, with a few trace gases mixed in. Those are the approximate numbers that varies depending on the source that you read. Number 9 is fluorine. Number 10 is neon. Neon, somewhat rare if I'm not mistaken. It is inert. Sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. Chlorine is a gas, but it'll burn out your lungs. So, argon, and it just moves on down the list of uh, different metals. The point here is, only one of these that's really suitable 
mixing with oxygen to make the atmosphere breathable. Turns out that's just what we have, nitrogen. There's a dirty little secret. I don't know about uh, gases that have multiple uh, you know, there are molecule gases, but I don't think there's much, in, again, in the way that would be compatible with oxygen where you'd be able to breathe it in. It's just nitrogen and oxygen. Now, what are the odds of finding a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere? Uh, very low. That's what the odds are, folks. Very, very low. This is another reason why this uh, uh, Earth does seem to be something special that was created. I'm an agnostic, folks, so I'm not getting into religion here. Simply saying that something was created here. We have a few others that are gases, Krypton. Some of these, I don't even know what they are, so. But there's very few of them that are actually inert gases that can be mixed with oxygen. If you have too high of an oxygen content, it will cause serious problems over time. So actually, oxygen technically is, I know, it's obviously vital to our uh, lives, absolutely vital, but technically it's toxic. There's some kind of an adaptation that allows us to use it. I don't know what the adaptation is. Obviously necessary, but very high quantities it can cause problems if you stay in the quantities too long. So there you have it. The bottom line is finding a planet with the right mixture of oxygen and nitrogen is going to be a real pain in the neck. This is what the scientists aren't telling you. Yeah, in both ways. If you want to say, well, this is a planet where we'll be able to go and live and breathe, work like you're on the Earth, uh, I want you to show me where that planet is. Because it's going to be a real pain in the neck finding even one that has the right mixture. And will that plant actually have oxygen that's replenished by uh, green plants? You add that into the fray, you're talking unbelievable, unbelievably low odds. That you have the right mixture of nitrogen and oxygen plus green plants to uh, produce the oxygen and carbon dioxide to help feed the green plants. Oh yeah, uh, this earth is something special, folks. No question about it. So chew on that for a while. That's what he says. We want to say they are uh, confined microbial life, I ain't give them no mind. I can't explain why there are plants on Mars, but I've seen too much in photos to ever disregard it. I showed it on Mars from above playlist and you know, some surface shots, you can see grasses. How that can be, I don't know. I don't only know what is. But for us, Finding a planet where we can actually breathe and live is going to be real tough. Sorry, uh, Gene, baby, but there aren't that many Class M plants in this, in this uh, universe. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for watching.